Beyond the Scoreboard 2014 with host Mark Smothers and Robin Netherton. Brought to you by Country Financial, a Lee Powell agency for all your insurance needs. And Wallace State Community College. Get in a Wallace state of mind. Well, welcome to week 10 of Beyond the Scoreboard and the final week. Happy uh, Halloween. Well, you know what? I'm liable to starve to death now, though. Why is that? Well, you know, every night when we get here, we get like Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Chick-fil-A feeds us and they, uh, they treat yeah. us right. Chick-fil-A um, hooked the whole staff up tonight and um, it was a, a great meal as usual at Chick-fil-A. You, you never are let down by them. It's always no. consistent and it's always very high quality. Uh, all right. Well, I guess I'll just lose a little weight, but uh, <laughs> it would never hurt you to lose a little weight, I don't guess. All right, main sponsors that we have for, you know, the season have been Country Financial. Uh, we appreciate the Lee Powell Agency for all that they've done to help us uh, bring these scores to you. And also Wallace State Community College. Uh, you know, uh, great asset to the community and the county and, and actually to North Alabama. So, uh, anyway. Thank y'all for your support. Uh, the team of the week this week. This week with Cold Springs Eagles. They had a big, big game last week. And a big season. Big season. Best season in a year since 2004, I think. I would think so. And uh, it may be I, it, as many wins as they've ever had in a season. Eight is two. It? Well, I saw Eight it was two. best since 2004, so mm -hmm. yeah, that, may be, that may be right. Okay. Well, we got a little bit of footage here, I think, of the – uh, presentation to the Cold Springs Eagles of Team of the Week. Each week, Coleman Electric Cooperative and TV27 recognize one of our area high schools as our Team of the Week for their performance the last week. Coach, you guys pulled off a great win last week. You're headed to the playoffs. We know you've got one more game ahead of you tonight. We want to recognize you as our Team of the Week and say congratulations not only for what you've done so far, but what you've got ahead. Good luck tonight against Holly Pond, and most importantly, good luck in the playoffs, Coach. Those two, I get the rest. Okay, all right. Uh, we got some other air times uh, that uh, we'd like to, for you to keep in mind as uh, we look for. Be on the scoreboard. So on Saturday, they play this thing Saturday. They you can you can tune in for an intellectual feast at nine o'clock on Saturday and two o'clock on Sunday. Hmm. And a lot of times when they see those, they see how we blow <laughs> the predictions on the SEC games. Yes, they I do. Suppose. They see they see it in post haste, so they see our uh, our wrong predictions. But hindsight's always twenty twenty. All right. I think the plays again on Wednesdays at seven p.m. and then uh, next Friday at four thirty p.m. Yep. Uh, so I guess, so tune in for uh, some replays of our game of the week and uh, be on the scoreboard. All right, uh, this first footage that we have here will bring right after these commercial breaks. Beyond the Scoreboard, brought to you by Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs, and Wallace State Community College. Get in a Wallace state of mind. A restaurant with a view. A game day bus. A kingdom for pretty princesses. Your local country financial representative knows that your car is much more than just a car to you. And since they know you so well, you can be sure they'll guide you to just the right coverage and available discounts to keep your car and everything else that depends on it well protected. Country Financial, grow your own way. Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs. Call 256-734-3348. Mmm, 
Delicious stud, hon. Eat up. There's plenty more. Billy, eat your stud. Think of the termites whose homes were protected with Termidor. Aw, oh, Dad. The brands will never get Termidor. They're clueless. Yeah, they even think homeowners insurance covers are damaged. <laughs> Do you hear laughing? It's probably just the pipes. Target pest control. We aim to please. One of these <clears throat> can be the most dangerous tools you can own. Because if you're careless, even for a minute, this can come into contact with those. Then it's lights out. At our Touchstone Energy Cooperative, nothing is more important than the safety of our members. We can't do it all. The best way to be safe around outdoor power lines, just don't touch them, ever. The first rule of every do-it-yourselfer should be do it safely. Coleman Electric Cooperative. Wallace State offers associate degree and certificate programs in Alabama's hottest job fields. Every year this decade, almost 3,800 new workers will enter these fields. Will you be one of them? Be one of us. Get in a Wallace state of mind. Almost $39,000. That's the mean annual wage for Alabamians trained as machinists and in computer controlled machine operation. Wallace State has machining programs to fit your career ambitions. Be one of us and get in a Wallace state of mind. Beyond the Scoreboard, brought to you by Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs, and Wallace State Community College. Get in a Wallace state of mind. Well, welcome back to Beyond the Scoreboard. We're about to show you a little bit of footage of some games we had this week, and actually we're going to show some footage of last night's game. We're going to start with the uh, Cold Springs Holly Pun game. And we got Coach Elliott on the phone with us. We're going to talk just a little bit about his team and his upcoming opponent. Uh, Coach, great season. Has Cold Springs ever won more than eight games? Well, they, um, last night we tied a, uh, a, a school record for most regular season wins. Uh, 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 back in 2003, I had a team that went eight and two during the regular season. Uh, the most wins in school history, though, was nine. And I'm not sure that that year of that, it was in the 90s sometimes. Okay. Uh, all right, you've got, um, looks like uh, Holly Pun on the ropes right here to start with. You're doing a little bit of power running at them. Is that mainly what you did last night? Yeah, yeah, we, um, we did. Well, that's mainly what we do most every night. But <laughs> yeah, I've seen yeah, that a little bit. Go, go ahead. Uh, I, I've noticed that a little bit. You do a little bit of power running. Uh, number two, I saw him running the ball. Looked like a pretty healthy guy. Yeah, that's Austin Moore. He's a he's senior running back for us. And it was a pretty big night last night for us. I think he had about 12 carries for about 120. So uh, he had a good night. Looks like uh, right here, one in 17 hooked up for a big reception. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we throw it around a little bit. Um, you know, three or four times a game, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Caden is uh, coming on. He's a sophomore, right? Yeah, he is. He, is. he had a good game last night. He had a big run in the second half, too, for about 40 yard touchdown or so. Uh, he, he's played really well. Uh, we've been real pleased with how Caden's played. And Tyler Rice, number 17, what, what year is he? He's a junior. Junior, so you got junior. both those. You got several kids right coming back, back next, next year, don't you? Yeah, we do. We got um, actually probably got about 90, 90 95 percent of our team back uh, that started for us. So um, you know, um, we 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 want to finish out this year the right way, and we're about next year when it gets here. All right, there's just a uh, uh, we just saw uh, Josh Freeman catching a touchdown pass there from uh, from uh, Caden, and uh, and the extra point kick was good and. Uh, congratulations on Team of the Week this past week. Uh, you know, that's Coleman Electric is honoring uh, teams. And it, was this your first or second time to get that honor? Uh, well, it was the first time from the co op. Um, we had gotten some Team of the Weeks from other um, other avenues, I guess you'd say. But uh, yeah, it was the first time from the uh, Coleman co op. All right, uh, all right, now we've looked at last night's game. And of course, we've we're the team of the week was because of last week's game, but next week's game is the one we want to mention right now. 
And right. you'll, you'll be on the road next week because of, I think, the Addison victory tonight over Double Springs or Winston County, uh, which, you know, sort of put the whole thing into, uh, I guess, so we could see who was going to be first, second, and third. But it, it was you, know, you and Tarrant and, and Addison all sort of jumbled up there together. And um, so the wins by the opponents is what puts them into the second place. And so that made y'all finish third. And by finishing third, that means you get to go where? Uh, we go to Gaston. All right. Friday night. Gaston, have you had a chance to see them yet? Um, no, not really. Um, I, I really don't know a whole lot about them. Um, I, I do know that uh, last time I coached, back in 2003, that team we started about earlier, they came to Coach Springs and beat us kind of in reverse roles where we were the second seed and they were the third seed. So we're kind of, you know, we're, we're really excited about to go over there and play this week. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not many times in life you get to um, – uh, relive something, so to speak. I know it's not exactly the same, but um, uh, as a coach and in my mind, it kind of seems the same. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, good luck next week, Coach, and uh, uh, y'all had an outstanding season. You know, nobody's going to take that away from you, and I think you guys will, you know, have, have a have a, uh, pres a, a presence right there in the playoffs, so uh, I think there's going to be a lot of teams looking at Cold Springs. Yeah, we certainly hope so. The kids deserve everything they get. Well, it was a turf, tough region that you came out of, and I believe that, you know, that's one of those regions that may have three or four first-round winners and go on into the, at least the mm -hmm. second round and see how things come out from there. But uh, good luck to you, and hope things go well for that whole region. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Uh, Coach Elliott from Cold Springs, glad to have you there with us. Now we're going to do a little bit of footage for the West Point uh, Warriors. Uh, in their final game last night against Priceville at home. Big game for West Point. They uh, got a big win over Priceville last night. We came out and watched that one. They jumped on Priceville early. Um, and often. And often. Special yes. teams were outstanding. They threw the ball well. They ran the ball hard. Um, Priceville did not have an answer for what West Point could do. And I don't think Priceville, um, they may not have converted to third down in the first quarter. Well, they may be showing the most exciting part of the game right now. <laughs> <laughs> the the halftime show. The halftime show. But you see it's 42 to 7 at halftime. And uh, West Point had a few seniors there that they honored their seniors and had some big uh, big plays and a big night, as you said. And I, I think the score was at the end of the first quarter is 28 to nothing. Right, correct? it was. That's right. Uh, but anyway, they had several kids who had, had big nights. I think Bryant Farley was one of them, uh, number two. Uh, number three, Kobe Kobe Smith had a couple of big touchdown he runs did. early. A strong run. Uh, 28, Ryder Jones had uh, a couple of big catches and he also did. played a, a fine ball game he as usual, football, yeah. along with Trent Campbell at the other defensive end. Those yeah. are two bookends that do a pretty good job. Uh, uh, I thought Will Wren had a couple of big plays for them. And, uh, uh, you know, but overall, big ball game for uh, – West Point, and it's uh, a really good way to get into. There's Will Wren on a big play. You know, West Touchdown. Point shows speed all over the field. That's one thing. Yep. I, this senior bunch right here, they have a lot of speed. The, the quarterback, the receivers, you know, they they uh, they really got they really got a good team put together this year out there, and a lot of size on this team. Uh, and I was I've always been impressed with their kicker, Tristan Skinner, uh, sophomore, I do believe, and. Uh, he may be a ninth grader. I was impressed with him last night when he kicked that one about to Florida. He, yeah. He, he put the boot to one. Yeah, so his extra points uh, are probably good from 45. Just I agree, I have to agree. Uh, does a good job. Here's the cheerleaders as they're uh, getting everybody fired up as usual. I had a good crowd, I thought, on both sides of the field. So uh, good crowd for the final game of this regular season. But West Point, uh, they look like they're getting ready to uh, go down to Parker and give them a, a child. A big and, and, you know, Parker got beat just, a, I think, last week with Dora. So yes. they are beatable. You know, they have a really good record. They've only lost one game, but they, they lost it to a 6-3 and three Dora team. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but anyway, West Point uh, fine tune-up last night. And uh, looked like they uh, were right on top of the game. They looked healthy. Uh, I think I, I think I saw one or two kids that were 
on the sideline taking it easy last night because of the injuries. They're sort of resting up, uh, but I think they'll be back next week. Uh, we just saw Cameron Moore make a catch and a big play. And, uh, you know, it was um, exciting for West Point's people last night. Uh, the game itself uh, was decided very early. And here we are with uh, uh, Tristan Skinner trying a long field goal, 36 yarder. And there it is. That looks He's just got like plenty the same. Leg. Those, plenty of legs. those officials got a lot of uh, exercise yeah, raising their arms. They got some shoulder they? work. Yeah. Well, okay. Congratulations to the West Point Warriors. Big win for them last night, uh, and getting ready to go into the playoffs with a lot of momentum. And uh, you know, I think they got to go to Parker. It's going to be a tough challenge. But if they play like they've been playing lately, they've got a good chance. You so, want to be the best, you got to beat the that's best. That's right. You want to go over some scores? Okay, let's do that. Okay. Hit, hit. Uh, Addison gets a big win over Winston County tonight, which really helped them in the region. Put some uh, second instead of third or fourth in the region. I think, I, think it, I think they were going to be second or fourth. Second or fourth. So, they would, so that, that not only gives second. them a home field advantage, but uh, gets them a lot better opponent. So Addison ends up 28 to 21 over Winston County tonight, just the way and, it should be. And I was out there and saw a good bit of that early, and uh, you know, right before half, you know, sometimes, sometimes you look at uh, some calls and stuff, but there was a late hit on the probably would have been the last play of the half, and the score was right at that time, Winston County 14 to six, and because of a late hit, the they got to extend the clock by one or the half by one play. And, uh, you know, there's 15 seconds before the play started. They may have been able to get a timeout call. But mm -hmm. anyway, they was able to run one more play, scored a touchdown, touchdown <laughs> pass, and then went for two and got it, tied up 14 all at halftime. So. I had a, a coach named Phil Wilson that always says it's the little things that matter. It is. And it is the little things that matter. Um, Cole Springs, big win last night over Holly Pond, finished the season 8-2, and two, best best. Uh, regular season ever for tied. Cold Springs are tied for the best re regular yep. season ever, and uh, they you know 39 13 over Holly Pond. Um, Falkville gets beat tonight by Danville 20 to nothing. <clears throat> uh, Southeastern falls to Cleveland 36 6. Sumpton Christian falls to Meek. Meek scores 20. Sumpton Christian 14. I was kind of shocked about that one. Yeah, I'm a little surprised at that too. Sumpton Christian played uh, tough against Cold Springs and Addison. Right, but it, you know, okay. sometimes at this point in the season, we both know they. Some teams hang it up this week and get ready for basketball. Uh, well, they could be. Uh, Tarrant uh, gets another win tonight, 29 to – I'm sorry, they lose tonight. Tarrant loses tonight. Shelby County, 47. Tarrant, 29. Well, Tarrant had probably the toughest um, non-region schedule I saw too, yeah. of any tip, anybody in the state. Yeah, I mean, they played 4A and 5A schools all night, all, uh, yep. all the time. And so. good ones. <laughs> and yes. good ones. All right. In 3A Region 5, Hansville gets a win tonight over Good Hope. Big win for Hansville. That's Good two way wins to... for Hansville at the end of the season right here. Yeah. You know, really came on a late. A lot of momentum but... going into the next season. That's right. That's what it takes to build it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I saw Good Hope last week, and I thought they were so much improved over what they were at the beginning of the year. So They you know, are. But you never, like I, like I was saying earlier, penalties for Ad, you never know with a turnover and a penalty what might happen in a football game. That's why we play them. Oakman, no shock here, gets a big win tonight over Barry, 49-12. to 12. And Oakman finishes nine or eight and one for the season. Susan Moore beats Pennington tonight, twenty-eight to twenty-one. Uh, Vinemont loses to Fairview last night at Vinemont. Uh, Fairview pulls it off right at the end. Vinemont was up, I think, twenty-one nothing at one point. Fairview I comes back so. and thirty-five twenty-seven. Had, had several big plays that uh, you know that Vinemont really over the course of the year have not given up that many big plays. But last night uh, it did seem like they gave up quite a few big plays. But you know you don't. You don't look so – too many times we look at Vimont gave up big plays, but what it happened actually, Fairview made some made big, big plays. plays. That's right. And, and they, Fairview, have, they have a lot of talent. So. Fairview's got some young talent. Uh, I think a 10th grade running back and, uh, you know, an 11th grade running back and then a 10th grade quarterback. So, you know, they're – they quarterback uh, a 10th grader? Yes. I think so, he was a senior. Wow. Well, I could be wrong. Okay. He may be a senior. Okay. Um, yeah. Winfield loses in, in that region to uh, Lamar County tonight, 34-27. In uh, 4A, uh, DAR loses to Brindley Mountain, 21-6. Pennington drops one to Susan Moore, 28-21. Uh, Hoax Bluff beats Luke Locust Fort, 31-29. North Jackson falls to East Limestone, 27-7. And Aniana beats Piedmont tonight, 26-6. 
Priceful loses to West Point, 52-21 was final on that. And then uh, Westminster Christian, 56, New Hope, 35. In Region 5A, this is well. Go now, there was one of those that may have a lot of, uh, tell us a little bit about how the season may progress. East Limestone, yeah, undefeated. Right, absolutely. And they put it on North Jackson pretty good. North Jackson had sort of come on at the end of the was year. Was tied for first. Was playing region. very well. Right. Yes. Yep. Yeah, you're right. And 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 you know North Jackson's traditionally so a powerhouse. Yeah. Anyway. And East Limestone may be setting up for a long run into the into the playoffs. Well, they're ten and zero. Possibly. And they were they were in West Point's region. You know they were in. Uh, yeah, was it West Point's region, East Limestone? Uh, yes, and they, yeah. they were the winner of that region. Yeah, so they, they, they had a really good year, East okay. Limestone. Um, Fairview's region, Boaz loses to Knights Sardis 12-7. Uh, Johnson beats Butler 49-14. Etowah beats St. Clair County 40-14. Fairview 35, Imont 27. Gunnersville 21, Albertville 16. Madison County 13, Scottsboro 6. Randolph, 34. Pope John Paul, 0. Pope John Paul didn't win a game this season. Um, Ardmore loses to West Limestone, 20-12. to 12. Columbia beats Central Florence, 16-8. to 8. East Limestone, 27. North Jackson, 7. J.O. Johnson wins another one, 49-14 to 14 over Butler. And that may be one of the most talented teams I saw this year with J.O. Johnson. J.O. Johnson, they have some speed, don't they? And then Haleville gets a big win over Lawrence County, 40-21. to 21. <clears throat> Haleville has had a good year. They have. And Haleville, yeah, say, that's, that's pretty good over a good Lawrence County team. And then uh, we, said, we said West Point, 52-21 to 21 over Price, which was a big win. And 7-3 uh, for West Point. That's an outstanding season for West Point in 5A. I think that may be their best 5A had, record. Had a good year. They had a that slump there in the mid, toward the... Uh, I guess beginning to end, right? And uh, lost three in a row, I think. But after that, uh, I, they looked good last night. Right, they did. They, they looked were, like they were ready. And, to they, go and in I like the way they were balanced on offense. Yeah. Uh, Coleman's region. Coleman gets a big win over Russellville, and Russellville had only lost one game, I think. And then was it one or two? Um, I, they lost one until tonight. And then they dropped to Russell. Yeah. They dropped to Coleman twenty-eight nothing. So Coleman comes in with a freshman QB and you know really puts it on. Yeah, they um, you know had a <clears> I think. A, uh, concussion with their starting quarterback, who's right. only a tenth grader, right. and brought in a Jennings kid, uh, Fletcher Jennings, I believe, and uh, a ninth grader. Puts points and up there. he had a big, big game. Uh, you know, he 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 did a good job managing their offense and stuff. And we're going to talk with Coach Britton about it in just a few minutes. So go ahead. Deschler twenty-eight, Athens seventeen, Bob Jones sixty-two, Athens forty, Austin forty-five. Um, Decatur gets a win over Oxford seventeen to fourteen. Florence 50, Huntsville 20, uh, Hartsell, and that's them playing up. Hartsell 28, Hazel Green 27. Hazel Green's a good team too. And, and then they're 7 8. Muscle Shoals 40, Buckhorn 14. So that region is probably that 6A region. That's another strong Yeah, they're major. super strong. And, 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 and they're playing mostly 7A schools. They're playing big. Bob Jones, Huntsville, the, uh, Hazel Green. They're playing the big mm -hmm. dogs, and they're doing okay. And then uh, finally, ARAB locally against Moody, ARAB 35, Moody 14. Okay. All right, uh, we're going to show a little bit of the uh, film that we had last night of the Vinemont and Fairview game. So uh, a big, big win for Fairview, uh, and then uh, a good warm-up for for Vinemont. They're going to have uh, their hands full next week at Lauderdale County, and uh, this will be good practice because uh, you know Fairview has a potent offense and. Uh, I thought Vinemont moved the ball on them pretty well for the most part, but they gave up a few big plays to Fairview. And that was Vinemont's little quarterback. He's a sophomore, also Garrett Bowling, running in there for the touchdown. He uh, played very well last night. And like you know, with the sophomore, you, you know they've got a lot of, a lot of growing development. Dude, boy, he plays well for a sophomore. Uh, yeah, and he started last year as a, as a freshman, mostly on defense, but right. wound up to the end of the year because of injuries. Having to... That's Kobe Nicholas with a big tackle there. Here's your quarterback for Fairview. He throws the ball very well. In, in the fourth quarter, we got to see him throwing it around, running it, doing just about everything. Yeah, uh, Hayden Maples. Hayden Maples. And, and I believe he is a senior. Um, and uh, they had uh, number five, Logan Brooks, I think, had a big night. And I think he is a sophomore running back. Uh, and um, he had actually played a lot more because of the injury, I think, to, I believe, to Austin Harris. Began the season as the you know, he was a sophomore last year and had a great year. And uh, 
That's him kicking the ball off. Here comes Garrett Bowen to turn the kick off. That's that quarterback. And he got tripped, tripped up. up there. Yep, tripped over his own man there. Five, Ori Woods. Ori Woods made a good run. I had several big runs last night. He had a good job. Right? Now, they were playing without um, their, um, I guess, leading rusher. Right. Yeah, John Michael Dye, who's out with an injury. So, but I noticed Bo Wright really picked up slack. The line blocks very well, and, you know, they, they moved the ball pretty good. They twice won in the fourth quarter. They drove down with inside the 20 and then turned it over on downs or interception. Uh, yeah, and, you know, they had – Melton, who uh, plays defensive end and offensive end, big uh, good big receiver, in the had several several catches throughout the ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, played a very good ball game, I think, for them. But uh, I think Vine Mott, uh, uh it's going to be a tough chore. But uh, somebody's got to go play Lauderdale County, and Lauderdale County is, you know, like one of the top three or four schools and teams in the state. But uh, good ball game, and you never know. Uh, if Vinemont plays extremely well, uh, gets their defense in gear, they they've got a chance. Besides to that open game, and they had a lot of kids out that opening game. Yeah. They've really played everybody to the wire. Yep, they have played some tough teams too. Yep. So good luck to Vinemont Eagles on next week's game. All right, uh, we uh, will be right back with a little bit more of uh, Beyond the Scoreboard after this message from our sponsors, Country Financial and Wallace State, and a couple of others. Beyond the Scoreboard, brought to you by Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs, and Wallace State Community College. Get in a Wallace state of mind. A restaurant with a view. A game day bus. A kingdom for pretty princesses. Your local Country Financial representative knows that your car is much more than just a car to you. And since they know you so well, you can be sure they'll guide you to just the right coverage and available discounts to keep your car and everything else that depends on it well protected. Grow your own way. Country Financial. Grow your own way. Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs. Call 256-734-7348. From the heart, monogramming and gifts. Find the right gift for any occasion. Designer jewelry, bags, clothes, and much more. Stop by today and ask about our monogramming and custom printing services. The best gifts come from the heart. It's true. The only time we think about electricity is when the power goes out. Then every minute seems like an eternity. Luckily, as a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, the people working on our behalf have the training, high-tech resources, and motivation to restore power as quickly and as safely as humanly possible. See what I mean? When it comes to electricity, you know you have an outstanding team working for you when you hardly notice them at all. Coleman Electric Cooperative. Wallace State offers associate degree and certificate programs in Alabama's hottest job fields. Every year this decade, almost 3,800 new workers will enter these fields. Will you be one of them? Be one of us. Get in a Wallace state of mind. That's how many registered nurses the national job market will need in this decade. Will you be one of them? Across the country, that's the median annual pay for RNs. Be one of us and get in a Wallace state of mind. Beyond the Scoreboard, brought to you by Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs, and Wallace State Community College. Get in a Wallace state of mind. All right, welcome back to Beyond the Scoreboard. We're about to have Coach Britton on the phone to talk with us a little bit about tonight's ball game where Coleman and Russellville, it's a big ball game. Okay, we're going to look at a little hey, bit coach, of footage Hey, Coach, this is uh, Coach Mothers, Coach Nelson, Beyond the Scoreboard. We're going to watch some footage of y'all's game here. Congratulations on a big win. There's a good picture of so Coach Britton right there walking down the sideline with his jacket on. I guess it's... It's a bit chilly out there tonight, Coach. It got wet early. Uh, and that wind was something, wasn't it? Well, you guys played it like was. it was 95 degrees. It was a ball game, too. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Um, 
Okay, uh, we've got a little bit of footage here in your quarterback. Uh, well, here's your defense at the end, number seven, Patterson. What He has had a great year, hasn't he? Yes, sir, he sure has. Well, he put a lot of pressure on the quarterback right then. And, and uh, I would attribute, when I've seen him play, the things that I've noticed about him is that motor is going 100% all the time. You're exactly right, Coach. He's one of the kids that, uh, you know, he, he plays hard and plays fast. And uh, what he tends to do a lot of times is just wear his opponent down just because of the, you know, the intensity level which, in which he plays. Uh, yes. And I noticed uh, I, right there, Bronte Harris, uh, I really wasn't able to get there tonight, but I, well, here he is making a tackle, but I saw him, I think it was him scored that touchdown just now, wasn't it? Uh, he, he did score one touchdown tonight, yes, sir. Down uh, away from the scoreboard, made a, made a guy miss and got in there. I think that was on a third down play. All right. Uh, there we had some good pressure coming up, uh, you know, without the guy holding holding your guy by the back of the jersey. I think he'd have had a sack then. Oh, great hit right there by number, number three. three. Um, uh, that's uh, Ethan McMahon. I, you know, I think I've seen him make some big hits in pass ball games, but, you know, it sort of gets a receiver's attention. <laughs> sure did. He had another big hit tonight, and they threw the flag. Uh, you know, he, he put his shoulder right on the guy's chest. It wasn't head to head, and then the uh, officials came in, and uh, the other officials had a better angle at it, and they waved it off. But it was he had a big hit tonight. Yes, I, I think that might have been what we just saw a few minutes ago. And then, and we just saw a completion from your quarterback. Is that Fletcher Jennings? Fletcher Jennings, yes, sir. Freshman. All right. And uh, a big pass down the sideline to number one. Now, who is It's Owen Lovell. Okay, Owen Lovell. Yes. And he's, and he's a pretty, fairly good-sized receiver, isn't he? Yes, sir. He's about 6'3", maybe 6'4", about 205. Uh, yeah, fine, outstanding young man. Well, Coach, this year you had a lot of young people coming up, and uh, I'm sure you know they're all excited the way the way you finish the season. I mean, you, it's when you go into the playoffs, unless you win the state championship, you can't finish the season this That's way. Right. And sometimes, you know, with a young team like this, that may be, you know, uh, next week since you won't be playing in the playoffs for the first time. Do you know how to do this without being in the playoffs? <laughs> Have you ever done that at cool. Coleman? It's been a long time, but, um, you know, our kids, uh, there's a big difference between 5A and 6A. And, uh, you know, not, not talking down or talking bad, but it, it was a uh, grueling schedule. And you had outstanding opponents week in and week out. And, um, you we, know, we've got to develop a little more depth to play at that 6A level. And I think that's what happened to us throughout the years. We got a little bit worn down the second half. So uh, those type of things, we're going to try to do a better job. And uh, real proud of our seniors tonight. It was senior night for us. Uh, I thought those young people just did a great job for us. And, in, in, uh, you know, just the preparation week in, week out, uh, their attitude. And uh, just, just real proud of our seniors. Well, I don't think anybody can argue that your region was probably one of the toughest regions in the state. Tonight, your region... You know, played non-region opponents, and most of them were in 7A, and they either won them or held their own very well. Well, they did. You know, uh, you saw Muscle Shoals go up, and uh, I think they played, uh, was, it, was it Hazel Green but, last night? And, uh, Muscle Shoals beats beat Buckhorn. Buck That's right. M Muscle uh -huh. Shoals thumped Buckhorn, and Hartzell beat Hazel Green. So, yeah, they go up and exactly they, right. some big wins, yep. And... Um, I think that was an eight and one Russellville team that came into your place. Yeah, y'all y'all beat y'all beat a very good Russellville team. So you guys have you know, y'all have had some some times this season where y'all look as good as anybody. Well, you know, we felt like uh the the problem with us is consistency with, with our youth and playing at a high level you just gotta be consistent, uh, play in and play out. And I think that's uh, where our maturity level really uh, need some work, but uh, you know, throughout the season, we did a lot better job. I agree. Well, I know you're going to miss the seniors that you lost this year, but uh, I know you've got also a lot of uh, anticipation with those freshmen, sophomores, and juniors coming up that put a lot into this season, and uh, 
you know, they'll do nothing but improve for next year. You so. guys, middle school, hadn't lost a game in three years, have they? Well, I think that's right. Uh, you know, they've, uh, uh, they're not exactly playing the same competition we have. But, Agreed, right. Uh, you know, they've done a good job. I'm telling you, Coach Turner does a good job getting kids out. And that's the big thing at the middle school is, is uh, you know, keeping up your numbers. And, and uh, I yeah. think his staff does a super job in that. And, um, you know, we had, uh, I think, 39 freshmen this year <laughs> that uh, – Coach Turner's coached all of them and uh, put a good taste in their mouth about football. And then, you know, that allows us to uh, get these guys in the weight room and get them another large group up uh, this year. So we're excited about, about our underclassmen. Well, congratulations. Big win tonight, Coach, and uh, uh, a good season for a young football team. Well, man, I appreciate what I did for football for us. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for thank being you. with us. All right, got a little bit of footage now coming up of the Good Hope Enhanceful ball game tonight uh, that was played tonight. Good Hope Enhanceful. And two and very improved teams. Both of them have improved. Both of them are young still. Uh, but uh, both of them uh, improved from the – toward the end of the year, they were both playing pretty, pretty good football. Right. Uh, and um, Hanceful, uh, as you see here, taking opening kickoff and uh, – Actually, I was a little bit surprised that um, that Hansville was able to win the ball game because they, you know, they had sort of been almost one-dimensional on right. offense because they had had some injuries and stuff and lost some kids that uh, that they really depended upon. Had to move a receiver to the running back position, and uh, so anyway, they uh, they had uh, struggled a little bit getting the offense going against some. Uh, good team, but uh, and Good Hope has ran the ball well, has thrown the ball well, especially late. They've they've really came on with their receivers and quarterback, and that and that running back, boy, he has ran really hard this season. And uh, you know their lines coming, get you know getting a little maturity on them and blocking. And it, I would like to say I watched Good Hope against Dar last week, and they were very impressive. Yes, um, but um, and you know it's, again it's the end of the season. Uh, sometimes some mistakes and stuff. Uh, can cost you the catch. Good throw right there. Good throw and catch by the Hansful uh, offense. And uh, and here you see their running back uh, number eight. Number eight, and I I can't think of his name. I sign of age, yeah. but uh, <laughs> uh, he has had a a big year. Reese. Bronte um, Reese. Bronte Reese. Yes, he has had a great year for them, and. Uh, you know, Coach Miller has kept them going all year, kept them energized, and uh, kept their confidence level up enough. Uh, so no quit in them. That's right. Come Absolutely. out tonight. Two games in a row. Two games in a row. Yep. And uh, Good Hope had won several here of their last half of the season. They had won three or four ball games. So, uh, you know, they both teams uh, closing out strong and very competitive tonight. And what was the final score on this game? Um, Good Hope finishes the season four and six, and Hansville um, two and eight. The uh, final score for the game was Hansville twenty-two, Good Hope twenty-one. So it was a it was a close one. Okay. Uh, and one two-point uh, conversion can get you. You know, one yes. extra point, one two-point conversions all you know make make or break yep. you. Uh, but a good ball game between uh, two teams that have a lot of history against each other. You know, they, that's right. Uh, that's a, a very. Uh, I'm glad they was able to get each other on their schedule. It's uh, you know they're not in region play anymore, uh, and uh, in the same region. So it's good to be able to continue to play some of our county schools, especially you know at the end of the year we had that's right. three matches that had county against county. Sometimes it's that, that first week and that fifth week and that yep. tenth week are the best weeks to go around and watch ball games just because you get to see two or three local county schools fighting it out for a little bit of, you know, there, there's no, no, you know, a lot of times no region implications, but it's just bragging rights. Just okay. Um, next part of our um, Show usually has an FCA Athlete of the Week, but this week, uh, you know, since we've done each school with an FCA Athlete of the Week, we're going to talk a little bit about church sponsors. Coleman First Baptist, uh, Hansville First Baptist, St. John's uh, Episcopal Church, and uh, Macedonia <coughs> Missionary Baptist, and we appreciate their sponsorship of our FCA. But uh, something coming up with the FCA is an Iron Bowl kickoff breakfast. It's at like 6 o'clock in the morning, the week before the Iron Bowl. Okay. And we're going to have a, or 
FCA is going to be doing this, I think, in the um, uh, Civic Center here in Coleman. And there's a lot. It's $10 tickets. But what we're trying to do is get some of the school's uh, leadership, FCA leadership in there. And it'd be good if you happen to, uh, you know, believe in what the FCA is doing. Uh, it'd be good to sponsor some tickets for the students that are the athletes in your school. So if you get a chance, let some of your FCA uh, students know that, uh, you know, if you have a little business or something and you want to sponsor five kids, you know, would uh, FCA is uses this money for a good cause and they just do a tremendous job of uh, growing, uh, you know, young people into uh, good, solid citizens, Christian young men and women, and we appreciate everything the FCA does, and they've meant a lot, and they're really uh, growing in the Coleman area. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, if you would, uh, think about contacting some of your coaches. They will be glad to uh, let you know who to contact about uh, sponsoring some FCA uh, Iron Bowl breakfast tickets. There'll be a speaker from a former Alabama player and a former Auburn player be speaking there at the uh, breakfast, and then uh, they'll be out in time to get them back to school. So, uh, you know, that's a good good event we have coming up. And then, you know, this coming Wednesday, we have a coach's breakfast at uh, Cracker Barrel, 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so, and FCA sponsors that. So, anyway, get out and... Uh, and help uh, support the FCA in your school. And we'll be right back. Beyond the Scoreboard, brought to you by Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs. And Wallace State Community College, get in a Wallace state of mind. A restaurant with a view, a game day bus, a kingdom for pretty princesses, your local Country Financial representative knows that your car is much more than just a car to you. And since they know you so well, you can be sure they'll guide you to just the right coverage and available discounts to keep your car and everything else that depends on it well protected. Grow your own way. Country Financial. Grow your own way. Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs. Call 256-734. Three, three, four, eight. Mmm, delicious stud, hon. Eat up, there's plenty more. Billy, eat your stud. Think of the termites whose homes were protected with Termidor. Aw, oh, Dad, the brands will never get Termidor. They're clueless. Yeah, they even think homeowners insurance covers are damaged. <laughs> Do you hear laughing? It's probably just the pipes. Target pest control, we aim to please. State offers associate degree and certificate programs in Alabama's hottest job fields. Every year this decade, almost 3,800 new workers will enter these fields. Will you be one of them? Be one of us. Get in a Wallace state of mind. That's the projected number of job openings for trained welders this decade. That's the potential salary for welders trained the Wallace State way with the latest robotic technology for manufacturing. Who will you be? Be one of us and get in a Wallace state of mind. Beyond the Scoreboard, brought to you by Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs, and Wallace State Community College. Get in a Wallace state of mind. Well, welcome back to the next session of um, Beyond the Scoreboard, uh, and we're going to talk just a little bit about playoff games coming up next week. We have several teams in our area, <clears throat> and, uh, and we're going to let you know who's sort of the winning our top two teams and top four teams in each region and who they're going to be playing next week and where those games will be played. And so. we only have one local team with a home game. 
and that's Addison, isn't that right? Oh, that may be right. I think so. Addison, uh, so in, in Addison's region, Tanner won the region. They play Otter next week at Tanner. Addison got second because of the win tonight, so they play Cleveland at Addison. So you can go okay. out and watch Cle Addison play the first round of the playoffs. That'll be the only local game. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Cole Springs will be at Gaston, and Tarrant and, will be at Fife. And it'd be a good, good game to the Cole Springs – Gaston game should be a very good game to watch, and we'd encourage all of you. And I think Cold Springs will come out on top of that one. I believe, I believe that region with Tanner and Addison I believe you're right. is harder than that. I region think with they'll five. win all four of those games. I believe I, the Tarrant Fife game will be the one that's in in question, and I think yeah. Tarrant's got the talent, but I think Fife is one of the best coach teams around from what I've seen of them. Well, they're um, they're rated number one right now. They're in the state. I Are believe. they? Yeah, I think that's their. Tarrant and Fife right. again. In 3A, um, if you'll have to drive to Oakman if you want to watch Lexington play Oakman. I think Oakman will get a big win there. Winfield plays Colbert County. That'll be a tough game for yes, Winfield. Will be. Vinemont's going to go to Lauderdale County. and That'll, that'll be, be a tough game. That'll be a tough and yep. good game to watch. And then Winston County will be at Madison Academy, and I wouldn't want to be Winston County at Madison Academy. Well, I agree with that. But, you um, know, Winston County played Addison to the wire tonight. So yeah, it'd be a good idea for those of you – you know, the fans, they need all the support they That's can right. get. So please go out and support your local teams and favorites as they uh, take some of them to the road. No, right, no, ahead. none of our local teams made it in 4A, but um, Cleburne County will be uh, coming to Aniana. Um, I know, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Sardis will be coming to Aniana. Jacksonville will be going to Lu Locust Fort. North, North Jackson will be going to Sachs. And then Westminster Christian will be going to Cleburne County in 4A. Um, in 5A, this is Gunnersville. This is 4A. This is 4A, okay, right here. Mm -hmm. The uh, Gunnersville finished 10 and 0, and they'll be either playing Alexandria or Moody. Um, Madison County will be playing the other one of Alexandria or Moody. They finished second, 7 and 3 in that region. Etowah will end up playing Lincoln, and then Boaz will be playing Mortimer Jordan, who won that region at Mortimer Jordan. In 6A, uh, Florence ends up winning the region, so they'll be playing Briarwood at home. Muscle Shoals will be playing Walker at home. Decatur will be moving, going to minor for a good minor team, and then Hartz will be going to Homewood. Okay. And I think that that region, that's Coleman's region, Florence, Muscle Shoals, Decatur, Hartz, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick against any of them. All those will be tough ball. All, every one of them I think will be tough ballers, and I, I would pick that region to win every one of those ball games. In uh, Class 5A, the uh, this is West Point's region. We have West Point going to the playoffs. They'll be going to Parker, you know, and Parker's a – Good football team only yep. lost one to Dora. Well, West Point played with a lot of uh, enthusiasm last night That's right. and uh, made some big plays. And if and they come out and do that, they who come knows? out and do that, they've got a good chance. <clears throat> J.O. Johnson will be going to Ramsey to play and possibly get an upset there. Russell will be playing Pleasant Grove at Russell, and then Dora will be traveling to East Limestone, and that Dora team is very capable of upsetting that East Limestone team. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's that's what the playoffs look like around here for our regions and uh, our teams. Okay. All right, uh, again, we'd like to encourage you to go out and support your team. And um, as you support your team, a lot of those teams have mascots. That's right. And our unsung hero for this week <clears throat> is the mascots. And I danced in a mascot head today. I've never put a mascot head on today, and that was one of the hardest things I've ever done, I think, dancing well, in a mascot head. The children just love them. They do. And, and, uh, and it was that Bronco head right there. Yes, that's right. And you can't breathe and you can't see. Okay. So it, it is difficult to do anything. Those I have a whole new respect for mascots after today. Okay. Well, that's. But we appreciate them and uh, what they add to the the games and what they add primarily to the fans, especially the young fans. That's right. Uh, but uh, our unsung heroes this week are our high school mascots. And you know, when you get to the next level, some of those mascots are really entertaining. Yeah. Dunking basketballs and kicking field goals and yep. throwing. That's pretty entertaining. Some of them are good. All right, well, we'll be right back after this message from our sponsors. We're going to talk a little bit about some SEC games coming up. Beyond the Scoreboard, brought to you by Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs, and Wallace State Community College. Get in a Wallace state of mind. A restaurant with a view. A game day bus. A kingdom for pretty princesses. Your local country financial representative knows that your car is much more than just a car to you. And since they know you so well, you can be sure they'll guide you to just the right coverage and available discounts to keep your car and everything else that depends on it well protected. Grow your own way. Country Financial. Grow your own way. 
Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs. Call 256-734-3348. From the Heart Monogramming and Gifts has just the gift you need for that special someone. Find a tote bag or build a bow. Peruse our selection of baby items. Or choose a nice piece of jewelry by Chameleon. And while you're here, let us take care of all your monogramming needs. From the Heart Monogramming and Gifts. The best gifts are from the heart. When energy prices start to rise, a single electric co-op can only do so much. That's why your Touchstone Energy Cooperative taps the combined ideas and resources of co-ops locally and nationally to deliver electricity at the best price possible. And in that unity, every member gains strength. Together we can take control of the future, instead of the future taking control of us. Coleman Electric Cooperative. Wallace State offers associate degree and certificate programs in Alabama's hottest job fields. Every year this decade, almost 3,800 new workers will enter these fields. Will you be one of them? Be one of us. Get in a Wallace state of mind. Almost $39,000. That's the mean annual wage for Alabamians trained as machinists and in computer controlled machine operation. Wallace State has machining programs to fit your career ambitions. Be one of us and get in a Wallace state of mind. Beyond the Scoreboard, brought to you by Country Financial, the Lee Powell Agency, for all your insurance needs, and Wallace State Community College. Get in a Wallace state of mind. We are back with the final segment of Beyond the Scoreboard for 2014, the end yep. of an awesome football season. And yesterday, volleyball season ended. Yes. And... Uh, one of our local teams that I don't think it's going to surprise anybody, um, Addison, which, you know, we're both from Addison, but uh, their volleyball program is absolutely one of the best in the state, if not, the, you know, I mean, just, yeah. if not one of the most prolific ever. But they, uh, they won their seventh state championship this time, uh, not yesterday, but the day before. And uh, I was and, surprised they even lost a set. And, you know, if, if they had been playing on – not a 2A classification. If they'd have been playing a one-team best in the state competition, they'd have been at least they'd in the final chance. two. They'd, 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 they'd had if they hadn't have won it. Because well, the two teams they lost to, they, I think they finished 58-2. and two. The two teams they lost to was Pelham and Danville, I think. And Danville was the top team in 3A. Uh, yeah, I think they had a, an overall, they played Danville four times and did lose one time, one time to, to them. them. So, so. Yeah, and then... Uh, and they beat uh, Mountain Brook and some of those other teams that were, oh uh, yeah, that's right. You know, large schools Spanish that were they beat Spanish in the top, even. Uh, that were in the top three or four in the state in their classification. So you know, they an outstanding volleyball team. And then this weekend, not 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 tomorrow, but in the next Saturday, Saturday week, uh, down here in Moulton at the Jesse Owens Park in Oakville is the state championship cross country meet. And if you've never been to that, that is a wonderful event for our youth. You've never seen anything like it until you go and uh, you'll see some of the top athletes and runners in the state out there running and those cross country kids, I don't believe there's a sport harder than that in the state of Alabama. It's it's a really true, it's a truly difficult thing to do and uh, you it know. It takes a lot of discipline. It does and I give a, I give a shout out to, and props to those kids and usually those are some just, you know, it's like football. It builds character. It builds, it teaches you a lot of things about life and uh, those kids learn how to work hard through adversity and never quit. And uh, that's what sports do. And, you know, we, we lose focus on winning and losing a lot of times. And yeah. uh, instead of improving. Right. And in sports, is, you know, I, I don't know who I would be today if it wasn't for sports, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so the SEC is coming. SEC. You know, we got some play. We got some games coming right. up. Uh, those of us who wear crimson all the time, Alabama's off this week. I bleed crimson. Yes. I, I even bleed it. Alabama's off this week. But they play LSU on November the 8th. At LSU. At, at night. LSU at night. And LSU is off this week, and LSU looked good against yes, Ole Miss. Yes, they did, yes. So that's going to be a tough ball game. <clears throat> and since we're not going to be here next week, we'll go ahead, go ahead and talk about it right now. We'll go ahead and pick Alabama on that one. All right. I'm going to go with Alabama, too. Uh, but I sure do wish they was playing in Tuscaloosa because yeah. then I, I could be a little more confident. Uh, Auburn is at Ole Miss tomorrow and that's going to be a, a big, you know, it's 
Right now, they're rated three and four in the bowl <laughs> championship division. <laughs> Somebody's falling out. Somebody's got to come it down. Up. Yep. Uh, it, somebody will be their second loss, and he'll just about eliminate them. So it's you know it's sort of like somebody was saying they're in a uh, elimination tournament right now. That's right. Uh, and based on what Ole Miss games. did last week, the way the quarterback played, and the way the the, off, the way they didn't come together at the end as a team, I'm going to go. I'm going to pick Auburn. Well, I'm going to pick Auburn, and I'd have picked Auburn no Before matter what loss. Ole Miss did last because week because of their defense. Um, well, Auburn has improved defensively. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ole Miss has a great defense, uh, you know, one, one of the best at, around. But I, Auburn's offense is very tough to contain, mm -hmm. and they do make some big plays, and they have any two or three kids that are capable of making breaking a big one at right, any time. Right. So I, I'm going to go with Auburn on that. Mm -hmm. I think Auburn will win the ball game. But then I picked Alabama when they played over there, too, and I, I was dead yep, wrong. That's right. I barely, though. Yep. You weren't wrong by much. All right. We got Arkansas at Mississippi State. And I've been on picking Arkansas all year, and I'm picking Mississippi State on this one. Are you? You know, this could be the big surprise of the year. Uh, but I'm going to go with Mississippi State right, right now. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're playing ball. They're big. They're fast. They're playing they got a team. couple of kids just hard to tackle. That's right. Uh, but I'm going to go with Mississippi State on that one. It's at Mississippi State. But, it, you know, if this was in uh, – Fayetteville, Arkansas. I believe I'd go with Arkansas. All right. Um, then we have uh, Texas A&M versus Louisiana Monroe. Texas A&M. I think they're going to be starting Monroe. a new quarterback. A&M will be? I think they're going to start a different yeah, quarterback. They, they've sort of struggled in the last three or four weeks right. uh, offensively, and that's that's where they're, they win games by offense. They, their right. defense has never yeah, been you're exactly right. uh, outstanding. But they expect their offense to perform, so that'll be a tough one. And uh, I think as they've sort of looked at the possibility of putting in another quarterback, but I'm going to go with Texas A&M to have a big win. Mm -hmm. now, I'm going to say that they'll score 60 points yes, second, or more. Yeah, losing them are second right. tier. Florida versus Georgia. And I think Georgia's going to come out ahead on that one. I think they've played better recently. So I'm going to pick be Georgia, but I'm going to pick Florida to Give them a play run. much better than they've played right. recently. And that used to be a huge game. It, it's Florida, still Georgia a huge used game. To, I mean, that it used to be a, the, the game to watch. Now, you yeah. know, it's it's not quite got the implications of Alabama and Auburn and those teams, Ole Miss sitting right over there and, and Mississippi State. But Well, I think Georgia's going to be that team from the SEC that sort of sneaks in to possibly into the playoffs. Right. Because if, you know, when they get uh, – they got two, they got three good running backs, but they got two outstanding running backs, mm -hmm. uh, and um, so, you know, they're going to be, they may be the team that upsets the West boat because the West You're has right. been dominating, the, you know, ever since Florida won a national championship right. about, about 2010 or so, mm -hmm. um, or nine, I'm not really sure, but anyway. Um, the West has pretty much dominated the ACC championship game, but you know Georgia may slip in and, and fool some people. They right. they're pretty tough, and they've played better defense lately. All right, we got Kentucky at Missouri. Ooh, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna go with. Uh, it's at Missouri. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Missouri then. I'm gonna go with Kentucky. Kentucky. Kentucky is playing much better defense. They're they're playing, uh, they're playing tough football. They're mm -hmm. playing mentally tough football. They're not. You know, laying down when a bad thing happens right. and, and giving up. They're playing to They're win. Playing through so, the adversity, huh? Yeah, I'm going to. Missouri's I'm, had two big upsets this year, so I'm I'm, I'm going to stay yeah. with Missouri. All right, South Carolina's versus Tennessee. And South Carolina um, has played a little better lately, but uh, you know, after that rough start, so I'm going to go with South Carolina on this one. Well, Tennessee lost a a tough one last week, but they really did found surprise the me they a little found bit. They found a quarterback, didn't they? they? They seem to move the ball pretty well. Do you think that quarterback will play that's into the game last week? Yeah, he'll, he'll be the one that starts Is because he? he earned a starting position. Um, but uh, I don't know if he'll finish. Well, he played uh, well. So he, he, he I don't know why they don't have had him going the whole year. Okay. Uh, so you're going with South, South Carolina? Carolina? over Tennessee. Well, I, I think you're probably right. I think South Carolina beat them, but I think it'll be a tough ball game. And then we got Vandy versus ODU. I guess that's Old Dominion. Um, Vanderbilt. There, and so Vanderbilt's got three wins. Vandy huh? playing a, a basketball team. I there think. you go. Vanderbilt's got three wins, make it four. I, I think so. I think Vandy will pick up their uh, final win of the year. I don't know. They, you know, it just depends on how Tennessee does. But yeah, I, I think Tennessee will beat Vandy later. So right now, I think Vandy's about to pick up their last win of the year. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are picking up our last 
30 seconds of the year. That's right. We want to thank our sponsors again, the Lee Powell Agency and Country Financial and Wallace State Community College. And uh, just been an outstanding season watching all these football games and these young kids develop and play and these coaches build character in these young men. And, uh, you know, it's a, a privilege to get to do football, high school sports. Yeah. It's, not, it's not something that you, you know, that's just given to you. you got to earn it. Yeah. And we appreciate the opportunity to come before you each and every week and uh, bring the scores and results. And it's been an enjoyable experience. And I want to thank uh, Coach Nettleton and Coach Dunklin both for sitting in and helping it with this. And uh, y'all have a good week. And don't forget to support your local high school and the football playoffs. But, you know, hey, if some of them start basketball, go out and watch them. That's right.